Yeah. I normally, when I talk about fantasies, I normally like make this symbol and I'm like, here are the things that you absolutely want to do before you die. And you know that, and here are the things that turn you on that, you know, you never want to do because they either feel dangerous or they're, they're really far out there and you're not actually wanting to try them. And then there's a ton of things in between. Mm. And it's my belief that people haven't fully reached their capacity of understanding that realm of fantasy until they found things that actually scare them. Like mm. they found places where they feel really shameful, that it feels scary to admit that. Because fantasy is just the access to creativity and it exists outside of the spectrum of social norms. It, it's, it's this place within ourselves that we can go to explore. And it really is one of the most vulnerable places to, t- to let our partners into. Like, what mm. are we thinking about? What are we masturbating to? What are we desiring? It's such a vulnerable place. And a lot of people hold themselves back even from themselves being able to identify fantasies out of the shame and fear of like, I shouldn't like that. That's bad. And then even if they find it, it can be really difficult to share because of the level of vulnerability that comes up internally, right? It's like, wow, I really get turned on by that, but I don't want anyone to know. Esther Perel, who's such a wonderful sex therapist, she talks about the secret garden. And Mm. I think that's such a beautiful kind of like phrasing for those places of like, that it's just these secret, sometimes can be these secret places that live within inside of us, inside of us, inside ourselves. Yeah, I find that what I think most people get confused with about fantasies is that they often think of them in a literal way, right? That if you have a certain fantasy, you absolutely want to act upon it. And you can have dark fantasies. Yeah, that's that thing, right? (laughs) Right, exactly. Like that's the, the other side. I definitely have some dark fantasies that I in no way ever want to act out ever. But like in the safety of in my head- You know, they're, they're fun to play out, but like if I was presented with them in real life, like I would never, I would never want to experience that. I I, I like them as imagined places in my mind. Yeah. 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 And I really love once I get comfortable with a partner, it's like being able to talk about them openly right? It's like to be able to say, I'm imagining this happening or that happening, or now this is happening, or you tell me what you see and what's happening without ever leaving the bedroom. But all these things are happening around or, you know, people are coming in or things are happening that in real life, yeah, I don't imagine I would ever do. Um, But it's fun. So, so exciting and so sexy and liberating to get to play with. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.